Welcome to episode three of this Let's Play series. My name is Daz Tactic, and this is going to be where we actually start to design our moon lander. Uh, it's not going to be such a moon lander and more just a moon hybrid lander. <laughs> so we're going to sort of use it as a spaceship and a lander. Uh, you can actually build dedicated landers, like this is what these sorts of pods are for, uh, where you can sort of then go and start building, and then you can have like um, docking ports, you know, top and bottom if you wanted to, so you can sort of dock with uh, with a command module uh, if you wanted to sort of do more like an Apollo-type mission. But we're not going to do that. We're going to uh, just go and build one directly from the tin can again. So just going to go back into this one. and uh, So this is going to be the... I'm just going to go through the... Again, the basic process of, of getting a, of designing a lander, um, getting it all ready to go, and then we'll actually go to the moon, probably in the, in the next episode, I would guess, and then maybe the one after that, we'll then do the actual landing on the surface. Now, we've got the same sort of thing that we have to sort of then be aware of with our, um, with our trip planner. We'll do that again afterwards. Let's just get the basics sort of done. So we need to have something that can land on the moon and get us home. Now, we don't need much in the way of delta V or change in velocity to be able to get back home. It's actually quite a, a simple process. So we don't need a, a massive craft. Uh, let's just go and drag this one in for, for as an example. Um, it's For the moon, it's actually, or the moon, it's actually really, really quite simple. Uh, but the further out you go into the, uh, into the Kerbal system, uh, the more uh, you are going to then have sort of troubles where you're going to need to have much more powerful ships to get back home. So, but anyway, for, we're just learning to crawl at the stage. So we're going to start off with this uh, same sort of craft, and this will be our spacecraft, but also our lander. So we'll just do it as both. Uh, again, we need to make sure that we can get back home. So we start at the back end. The back end of this is we need to uh, get back to Kerbin. We need to throw a small, extra small parachute on the top. Okay, and uh, underneath this we need to then also just think ahead a little bit, even though it's not here right now. There will ultimately be um, a need for thermal uh, coming back in into the uh, once we sort of get back from the moon. The mun. God, I've got it. I've so, got such a mental block with that. So anyway, we've got th a thermal uh, heat shield on the bottom. We've got our crafting through there, and we've got the uh, the actual uh, parachute. So this is all we need to actually get back home. Uh, that's 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 it. Uh, we need to then detach it from the rest of the rocket. So this is our top stage. The next bit of it is going to be a decoupler. So I'm, I'm just going to sort of rattle through this reasonably quickly, I think. Uh, that then separates it from whatever's below. You can see there we've got the decoupler now in, in our staging. I'll still actually explain everything, but I, I just will... Um, and this first bit with creating the lander, I do need to explain this one fairly well. Now we're just going to need to get some fuel. Now there's a few different things we have to consider here. Uh, yeah, let's just go and do it. Let's just go and first of all put the fuel tank on. Now we've got a small size at this point in time. I'm thinking if we go with this one here, this Metalox fuel tank, it is going to ultimately be a. Um, it's going to that's going to have enough fuel definitely to be able to land and get off the off the moon or, or the moon. I would think. Uh, and then we just need a sort of like a simple engine for this one as well. And we'll just go with what we did before, just this orbital terrier engine done so that's now just our basic sort of engine by the way when you do see these usually you can click on them and uh and then highlight different sorts of things actually why is it not wanting to do it um quite often is like a different uh, graphic thing there's a lot of little buggy things that aren't quite working at just yet in the game um yeah which is a bit of a shame because uh you sort of see things, you think, oh, that should be then changing the look of the actual engine, but it doesn't seem to be for whatever reason. I've got no idea why it should be, but it's not. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> eventually that will be there. This, as I say, is an alpha. Uh, you have to forgive it that because, uh, or you should forgive it that because it is actually uh, still, it, it's early days in this version of the game. And uh, even though it's been in development for a long time, uh, there's a lot of little things that are wrong with it. Uh, a lot of little calculations that don't quite work out as well, as we'll probably sort of find out fairly soon. Now we have 1,300 uh, Delta V uh, down through here. This is sort of designated for in, in like in a vacuum. So that's a fair bit to land and get off. If we now just go back and have a look at our trip planner and we go and select the MUN, and we can then sort of see if we just do a, um, a one-way trip or even a, a round, the round-way trips aren't, aren't really all that accurate, but it sort of gives you a bit of a feel. To go into a, um, 
to, to get in, into the, the orbit around Kerbin, we're going to need around about 4,000 Delta V, I guess, just to sort of get us up into there. <coughs> to then go from the Kerbin to the Mun is going to cost is going to take about 860, and then to get into a low or a low orbit is going to be about 280. Now to get out of a low orbit and go back to Kerbin is around about 280 as well. So we're going to need about that to get back out, and um, and when this craft is going to need to go down to the surface, it's going to have to leave the surface and get back. So it's probably just enough. It's very very tight. But I don't really want to take any more with me, to be honest. So I could take our extra extra fuel tanks if we if we needed to. Um, I mean, you could even create like a a a lander that is um, that has got like a where it actually leaves its landing elements behind. So we could even do that. Like, there's so many different things you can do in this game, and, and by all means, have fun with it. Like, if that's a bit of a concern. Do we think, okay, well, look, all we really need to get off is we need about 700 Delta V to get back off and get back home. Uh, actually, maybe 800. Um, sorry, no, not that, yeah. No, that is, that's going to be around about 800 to get back off. So we're struggling a little bit with this. If we can get um, to, to get back home again, actually, this is to land, but to then leave, it, it's not going to be that much. I am actually confident that this will get us home. And I, I can't explain why, but I think, I, but I'm, I'm pretty confident this will actually then work. If we wanted to though, we could actually go and ditch, ditch this one as an example and go and get uh, the small tank back in here, throw that one in and have that just in the final stage and then have another stage um, where, we, where we then use the, um, uh, like an actual lander stage, a bigger, a bigger landing lander stage. But I think we'll just we'll see how it goes. Again, it's one of these things where if we screw up, we screw up, and that's just the way it's going to have to have to be. <laughs> so uh, if we screw up, we screw up, and then and then we have to start again. And that's that you'll find that a lot with Kerbal. Uh, when, sorry, with Kerbal, um, yeah, Kerbal, uh, Kerbal uh, space program. Anyway, let's um, let's keep on going. So that's going to be essentially the rocket to get us down to the surface and back up again. It's going to be tight, but we'll do it. We'll do it. Now, we're going to need to have landing struts for this, so we just go across to our um, ground area. And we've got a few different things. The mediums are probably going to be too big, um, as far as the struts are concerned. Um, but the smalls are probably going to be a shade small. But let's just see how they actually work. So I'll just go and, now you can see there, I've only got like, a, I don't want to be placing four separate ones. So I, I, I go into and right click on symmetry and go to four. And I'm just going to just place the four of those around the bottom of the ship like this. I don't mind it sort of coming off the base there a little bit. And to test and see how that one's going to then work, what we can do is just right click on it and just tell it to extend the legs. And that's fine. It's, it's certainly down below what it needed to be. And so that is essentially our lander <laughs> already. Now, if we did need to take extra fuel down with us just to sort of make sure that we can actually do what we have to do, we could, if we wanted to, uh, even put some detachable tanks on the side of it or do something like that if we, if we really sort of felt that that was required. But I'm not going to worry about that one just yet. Uh, we're going to be doing other similar things as we sort of go deeper down into the actual, into the settings. Let's just um, retract those legs. And uh, a few other things we're going to be needing. Now, one of the things we are going to struggle with is electricity because we're going to be spending a lot of time without the engines running uh, when we're sort of traveling out to the, uh, to the MUN. And so we need to have, um, we do have some battery power back in here. If we have a quick look back at our uh, command module, we, I think we looked at this the other day, you can see we've got 50U uh, electric, electrical charge, which we can keep going. So we just need to re replenish that. So let's go and throw a couple of the um, a couple of uh, solar panels on this one. So we'll just go down to electric. I could put more batteries on, but I don't think I need it for what we're doing. I think uh, solar panels will be heaps. Just go and get these small retra retracting ones. Let's just go and right click this, make it two. I can push the X, uh, it's like if I press X, it goes up and shift X goes back down anyway as well, just as a keyboard shortcut for that one there. Uh, let's just go and place this one. Again, it doesn't really matter where it goes, as long as it's sort of, yeah, that, that there will be fine. So we'll just go and throw some solar panels on either side. 
Uh, we also then have to get down onto the surface with our Kerbal Nort. And so we'll um, go across to, I think utilities will have ladders. There's a small ladder right here. And so, we'll, and we don't want this one to, to go to the other side. So we'll just make this a single sided and uh, we'll just go and place it around here. Now these little areas that you sort of see where my mouse is, they actually are also small ladders um, that, uh, that extend back up to there. So we'll just go down round about here, I think. And so that will be the, um, the ladder that will then, that then go down again. I can just right click on this one and extend it and just sort of see how, how deep that's going to go. That's going to be fine. So that's going to be not a, not a problem. All right, so that is sort of our lander. Um, there's a few other things we can do with this. And I'm sort of, I'm tempted to, to add just a little bit more. Uh, we have minimal... Um, a, a mono propellant in the actual in the in the capsule itself. If we go and if we go just hover over this one, you'll see it's got uh, 0 0.04 tons of mono propellant. We could use thrusters just to help to um, to maneuver the craft, but I just don't think we need it yet. We will get to that, but we don't need it right now. This is enough for us to actually have a, like a landing a landing uh, craft. You can see there that with the extra weight that we've now got on, we've got a little bit less than what we sort of had wanted there before. Uh, as far as the extra fuel is concerned, do we bother with that or not? We certainly could. You know, I might just do it as an exercise just so that you guys can sort of, uh, again, you, you can do anything you like in this program. So what we'll do is we're gonna go to the fuel tanks and really it's the methylox is what we require because that's what's gonna be sort of used. Now we do actually have these little dumpling uh, fuel tanks which we can sort of put. Now you can actually go and and push these around inside your craft. Let's just go and uh, just press X and we'll just have it so that we've got like say uh, on two sides. Now this has got um, an extra um, yeah, 0.11 tons. This one here has got one ton. So these are only little 0.1s. This is a 0.2. Um, this here is a 0.3. Let's just go and grab these and maybe we'll just sort of throw these on the side. And uh, so we're just going to go and place them around there. Won't really matter. <laughs> so they're now on either side, but it's a little bit big uh, for what we require. And so I'm just going to push them onto into the inside of the actual craft itself. And so I do that by using this command here, rotate and translate. And uh, so I'm just going to go and um, alignment local button. We'll then sort of align just the local thing. And if I go and click on that one, you'll see that we've got like different buttons that will, that will now sort of uh, indicate what's going to happen here. I'm just going to drag that one in just so it sort of uh, hugs in just visually a bit nicer. It's actually inside the um, inside what we've got, but that'll be fine. Um, again, I could actually just reduce this one down just a little bit. If I'm if I'm wanting to get fine command, just use the shift key and it will then sort of go into like a finer sort of uh, way of actually doing that one. But that looks pretty cool. And that does give us now 1,700. We've now got a safety factor uh, with what we've now got with our fuel. So there we go, our launcher, ready to go. <laughs> with the extra fuel and everything else on board, which is great. We, if we did drop tanks, we'd need to use um, uh, couplers, like we'd need to sort of then go through and start to use some of these radial decouplers and then have other tanks on the side. But let's just do it this way. This will be fine. Okay, next thing we need to do is, so this is going to get us down to the surface and back up and back home again. So just this whole little craft that we're sort of seeing through here, I'll just go back to the selection tool again and um, get rid of the parts manager. And so that's, that is essentially the, um, now, we've now we've now dealt with the coming home at the top. We've dealt with the going to the MUN and getting back off the MUN with all of this bit down through here. That should be all we require. There's always something you forget, but in this case, I think that's all we actually do require. Next we'll do, what we need to now do is if we go back to our, um, our trip planner, we need to, so we've essentially ticked from there and then back home again. So that 580 and there back. So we need to now get a, um, a craft that will probably have to then do the work of about a thousand um, about a thousand or so, maybe say like 1,500 delta V, to uh, leave the um, to leave the orbit of Kerbin 
and mo and get into a, an orbit around the Mun. So we need to have something that will then do the Mun intercept, like the, the orbital intercept, and also then circularize the orbit once we get there. So we'll say around about 1,500 delta V. And so we can just use the same sort of sy system that we've been using in through this side. So let's just go and do that. Um, so we'll get another decoupler, just a small for the bottom there. And so there's a few things we can do here. Now, am I concerned about the aerodynamics of this top bit? I am a little bit, but not overly. So it's not dramatically bad. We could sort of think of ideas like, do we need to actually have it so that we've actually got like a, a shroud around this whole system? I don't think I'll bother with it. Um, if I have troubles with stability, I may put one on. Uh, again, uh, we'll find those under probably, I think, aerodynamics. We'll end up with sort of like a, um, uh, it's not these nose cones, it is actually a shroud. Uh, no, it's not actually there. I wonder where it is under these. Nope, I don't know where it is. Uh, let me have a bit of a look. Won't be the coupling. Engine mounts, adapters, beams, panels, trusses, tubes. Still not there. Uh, where the hell is it? I'll just pause and see if I can find it. There it is under payloads at the very top fairing. And so what this is, I'll just show you how, how to use it. We might as well throw it on. Why not? It's... Um, when you play the campaign game, and my head's in the campaign game, in the campaign game, you're trying to do things as cheaply as possible, which is sort of a, a good way of playing the game once you sort of get to, I guess, a, an intermediate type level. But really, there's no cost requirements that you have to worry about playing this game. So just use anything you like. In fact, we'll sort of go with bigger bigger rockets on this one as well. So if I go and click on that one, uh, and then click on this in through this side, I can then go and uh, start to then sort of uh, see how I'm sort of now pushing, like I'm actually creating like a, a shape. And so I'll just get it so that it actually covers that area. In fact, if I just drag that one in slightly, uh, and then we add another section on top, drag it up. We're missing a little bit at the bottom there, but this is essentially going to then create a um, an area. Should I just move that one down a little bit to, oops, ah, damn it. that again <laughs> things don't always go according to plan plus plus and that'll do it and so that's just going to now give us a um, a nice um, uh, aerodynamic uh, lift off, and um, and then at that point uh, we just go tick, and it just finishes it off. And so this is now fully enclosed inside this particular fairing. Now we're going to be that also has its own uh, area back in through there as well. So that just keeps everything aerodynamic. If you do actually have all sorts of little bits and pieces tacked onto something, just use these fairings. They're um, they're quite they're quite useful in this sort of regard. Just keeps it all nicely self-contained. So at this point, we now actually have everything that we had going to the, or you know, landing on the MUN and coming back is back in this particular area. So the next thing we need to do is we now need to push all of this weight further on. So let's just go across to the um, to the fuel tanks again. Let's see if we if we use one of these fuel tanks again and just sort of see how that one goes, just to get a bit of a feel for the delta V of this stage. Let's just open this one up so we can sort of see the, the full delta V of each of the stages. By the way, I've, I've actually found that I've had some er errors with these, so I'm hoping it will actually still be okay, like, you know, that it won't um, throw a, a poor error. Yeah, this has thrown an error. See how it's actually got, oh no, 634, that's nowhere near enough. So we needed to have around about, say, 1,500. So we're not even close to getting what we require there. So let's go and make this now a larger part of the ship. So we'll actually go and expand things up a little bit. So we'll get rid of that, get rid of you. Uh, we can get, with the different fuel tanks, there are fuel tanks that expand. 
Uh, so this one here, for example, expands from a tiny up to a small. Uh, there should be ones that also then go to mediums as well. This one here's a medium that goes from a small to a medium. And so this is actually still a fuel tank, but it's got a different shape. And so this one does hold a lot more fuel and uh, that's it can then get up to around about the same width as our fairing happens to be. Um, just move this one down a little bit. And so we'll see what this one does if we then go to one of the other orbital engines, but in the medium size. And so the orbital engines, this will be a sustainer, which means that it's a bit more powerful. That's an orbital. This is a, a, a poodle engine, like a double poodle engine type thing. We've got a, um, a rocket engine, a mainsail, a sustainer, a launcher. This is, we're getting up to the largest now. Let's just go with the poodle. The poodle is like, again, a fairly sort of small engine. 2,276, that's all we require. That's, uh, that's heaps. That's um, more than enough to now push the craft uh, with that stage um, well and truly into all the different orbits and things. In fact, it's a lot more, it's overkill. It's, more, it's got a lot more power there with the Delta V than what we require. Uh, we're now hitting, hitting into the next biggest stage of building these sorts of things. And so that should be, um, that. well, that's going to be good enough for... Um, for doing all the things we need to do uh, in, um, uh, like even even getting into orbit uh, from, like we could ev even use this as our as our stage to get into orbit uh, for the uh, for the craft itself. So we'll now go back into the um, the couplings. We sort of now get, come back into a bit more of a uh, into a, a bit more of a cleaner sort of stage. We now sort of move that one through there, and let's just go and get up. So we'll just we'll just get something that's going to give us around about you know say four thousand uh, delta V to then sort of uh, leave the launch pad and away we go. So we'll just go back into our fuel tanks. And uh, we're now looking at the mediums and we're looking at the circular mediums. So we're looking at, um, we just sort of keep on scrolling down, these sort of tanks in through here. Let's try a big tank and just sort of see what that actually does. And then we need a big rocket at the bottom here. Now, I sort of, I sort of don't want this to be, uh, I want to show you other things as well. So I, even if this one works, I think I'll actually still come back in and um, and do more than what we're actually requiring here. So what we'll do through here is we just go to our medium. Now, what we want to have is we want to have like a, um, we've got a mainsail. And the important thing again is to look at the, um, not so much the the uh, uh, the ISP, um, but the more just the, the maximum thrust in through there, which has actually got like a lot of, 1,381 uh, kilonewtons of thrust is, is a hell of a lot. And the efficiency of, uh, of two, 265 from the surface is, is okay. This one here is 282. It's much more efficient. It's got a uh, maximum uh, thrust of, um, of only 525, but that still may be enough. If, let's just put it on and have a bit of a look and see if this will then work. And so that actually doesn't have enough delta V. Okay, this is good because I wanted to sort of show how this would, would then work. So 2,989 delta V, we're looking for at least around about 4,000, maybe even a little bit more. So that engine generates about 3,000. If I go and grab the other one, which is less efficient, but more powerful, this is the mainsail, and throw that one on, you'll see it's a lot less delta V because of the inefficiencies, even though it's a much more powerful rocket. Let's just ditch that one, get rid of that one, throw this one back on board. But it's not enough to take us up to where we need to be. So we need to boost it and give it some help. Now, another thing we have to check is, is it strong enough to, to get to lift the, the craft? And if we just go to the engineer's report, so it's missing RCS, which is actually fine. See how the thrust to weight ratio is just over one. This is not good enough. <laughs> Nowhere near good enough for us. And so this is not... Re like it's going to struggle like anything to leave the launch pad when it's that close to just number one. We're looking closer to the level at number two. So we're going to have to boost this thing up and we're going to end up with s some stability problems as well. So uh, what I think we'll do is we'll go and um, we'll get how many, how many uh, we can put other boosters on this thing just to sort of try to get the total like it's three, we need to get at least another one or two delta V going back in through there. Now to do that, we're going to have to attach the boosters to the side of the rocket. Let's just try attaching two and see if that works. And then we may have to attach four if we if we do run into troubles. So we do that one. The We need to go back to our uh, couplers again. And we go to the radial couplers. 
Now we actually have, what's this one here? That one looks a bit unusual. That's a bit too tricky for me. I think I'll just use this, the boring old one in through here. And we're still on two, on the symmetry mode node of two. Just going to go and throw that one into there. So that's going to be, uh, that's, that's a decoupler. By the way, I can right click on these and bring up the, um, the, the point and it's got like how much impulse, how many kilonewtons of, of pressure it pushes away from the craft. That's actually important. So we've got maximum of, of 750 kilonewtons. I don't know if it's working yet in the game, but it is important anyway, no, no matter what, what it's going to then do. And so from that, we can then attach solid fuel boosters on board. So if we just go back across into our engines and then scroll down, here's our solid fuel, fuel boosters. These are sort of self-contained. And we've got things from like small boosters, like in through here, which is probably all we actually need, uh, all the way up to um, like to, to massive uh, boosters like this, which is overkill for this particular craft. So we don't need those. What we do need is just this, these small ones here. This one here is even larger again, I think. Yeah, again, overkill for what, we, for what we're looking for. So we're looking for a, um, these are thumpers, these particular small ones that we're looking at. Um, what have they got? They've got a maximum thrust at one atmosphere of 250. You can see their, their efficiencies are very, very low, but they, these are basically throwaway, throwaway items. By the way, these little ones can be used to push. If you're having trouble with things colliding with your craft when you ditch them, just use these tiny little separatrons to um, position them on, on equipment. We'll test this and sort of see if this one will actually then go and work. So let's just go and throw this one on board. Now, again, we've got aerodynamic problems at the top and so we need to sit in, then just do something with those so we will go across to aerodynamics there's our nose cones and this is a small size at the top so we'll just go one of these throw them on board and so now we actually have the um, uh, these components now on the side now that's going to it's hard to sort of gauge it says 412 with what we're sort of seeing through there with two of those so it's not really enough. We need to get another, maybe maybe we need four of these to uh, sort of help us get off, uh, get up, up and away here. So what we'll do is we will go and um, you will get that will that one will ultimately come back down as well. Let's just re unattach it from this location here. Then we're just going to go and press X two more times and then just reattach them again. And we'll just attach them down fairly low because we don't want them interacting with our ship too much. So we just put them into there. So that's a that those little boosters now take it up another 720. I'm going to try that. I've got a lot more in here than what I and had anticipated. So I'm actually happy with that stage. I think all in all, the total amount 7,685 is sort of where we were aiming for around that 8,000. Uh, 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 Delta V and again when you're doing this don't be too scientific just do what feels right to you you'll get a feel for it um, soon enough so with that done uh, we, one of the we're now going to have potentially a lot of stability problems and we could just try launching and just see what happens let's just do that one of the best ways of, of testing this now we're going to call this this vehicle the um, the DAS um, Moona Explorer and we'll save that uh, where are we actually I'll call it Daz Mano one this is one that I was um, trying to sort of get done the, the other day but it didn't, didn't work all that well oh by the way actually just for the look of the craft like at the moment we're just using the the uh, colors that we had sort of brought into the game but for these sorts of things in particular we could just go to the color manager and instead of having the whole assembly, which is everything, we could just go to individual parts and just change, for example, this color and make it so that it end, ends up just being yellow. So if we go and click on those, they'll just change. It does, it does look nice <laughs> when it does look like that one. So we'll, um, we'll uh, leave that one. So we'll just go back into here again. So it's just a, a nice way of just changing the overall look. And again, even with, the, um, with what we had at the top and through here, if we wanted to sort of change the color of that one through there we could just uh, this one is actually right we can just go back in and um, actually that one didn't attach it I'm not sure why 
there we go. So we just change, we can change the colors. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's gonna look great. The different rockets that people will design. I don't know what I clicked on. There's something inside there that's now got the full orange. <laughs> anyway, that's fine. Uh, we'll just leave that one there. So this is now the, um, the, the new look uh, Muna uh, Mano one. Let's just save that one again and save. Okay, and so let's just go and test it. Um, just see what actually happens. I'm assuming it's going to fall apart and be very unstable. But we won't know that until we actually try it. So now a few things we need to do. Actually, one thing we do need to do is these four here probably aren't going to be able to lift the, the ship off. Yeah, 1.22. It's not, it's not terrible. But if we move this engine down into this area, we then end up with a... Um, with a bigger, bigger lot of engines back and through there. See how the, the actual calculations failed a little bit through there? So that's actually not quite working the way that we would expect it to. That can now come back out. Um, they then separate from there. When we're ready, we separate that one. Let's go and push this one up into this zone and get rid of that one. So when that separates, this one then fires. Uh, the fairing, I probably want the fairing to actually come off um, at around about the same time that this fires, but I'll I'll keep that one separate. This one as well uh, for what we're doing up through here. This will ultimately be when we get to the Mun. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll pop that into that that one there and just get rid of this one, just to clean it all right up. And then this is when we get back home. So our staging has now been sort of set up a little bit more effectively. But see how. This is now no longer working. I don't know why. It just does it in the game, unfortunately. So it's um, it's it, like it, there is uh, still a lot of guesswork that should be fixed at some point. As I say, this is an this is an early access to the early access that I've actually got my hands on. Um, but uh, that, those sorts of things will actually fix themselves up. So just double check things. If it, like if there'll be times when things don't quite add up, like in this case. So I don't know why, but it's just not adding up. Anyway, that's uh, the way it goes. Um, we, I will actually just resave this one now. And save in we go. And um, let's try to launch this thing. See how we go. Now, I'm expecting that this will try to pull itself apart. Uh, that would be my, my um, guess. Let's just speed things up. If we point towards the east, I uh, see there's something... I don't know what that's doing. <laughs> no idea. There's all these little weird, little weird and wonderful things that you've sort of got to restart your game just to be able to uh, to to get things sort of working again. Now, as soon as we get a little bit of a glow on the horizon, I'll stop. But there are a lot of those sorts of little buggy type things that are uh, in the game at this stage, and. Um, they will be fixed. So I, I have no real uh, qualms about that. I've got no idea. I think this is from the um, uh, from the intro screen. <laughs> it's sort of uh, it's it, it's worrying in one sense, but I, like the fact that it's just so early, it actually doesn't really matter. Let's just let's just. I think we've got everything set. Let's. This is only purely a test anyway. Let's just do the countdown. We want to gauge just how how stable or unstable the craft actually is. And I'm just going to let it fly up, basically. We're seeing some, a little bit of movement, not too much, actually. That wasn't too bad. That actually doesn't look too bad, actually. Let's just see what happens if we start to move it over. How responsive is it? Even that, at low in this sort of soupy atmosphere. This is, this is actually, this isn't bad. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry to say. Um, I was actually hoping to have some issues, but this is actually extremely stable. Um, this would get into orbit, I think, no problem at, at all. Well, I don't, I don't want to do that with this with this ship, so I'm going to... Um, I'm going to call this episode to a close and we won't have to change. Actually, what I might do is I'll, I'll, I'll assume that there's been a problem and I'll then come in and, and fix that particular problem. So you press escape. You then go and revert back to the VAB. Confirm revert. Because that is incredibly stable. That was that shouldn't have been that stable, <laughs> to be honest. But you are going to design ships that aren't stable. So let's just go through the principles of how to then fix up ships that aren't stable. Um, just let it load in. 
it usually it's trial and error, trial and error, trial and error until you get it fixed. Okay, here we go. So, um, well, nearly here, nearly here we go. Right, so typically what will happen is that you won't be able to have much control over the ship, but this, this engine is actually giving us a lot of control, which is actually quite nice. But if you don't actually have it, particularly when you're in the low atmosphere, you can use wings to give you more stability. So we'll add those on. So this is probably a good good idea to sort of get in the habit of doing this anyway. We just need stabilizing wings and even really small ones will actually do, it will help a lot. And so I'm just gonna go, that's probably too small actually. I'll just go to the small ones in here. And so these are small wings. Um, again, I just gotta get the, the symmetry mode up. So we're just gonna press X until we got four. And so we'll actually have them essentially hugging all the other different zones. I won't tweak the the wings as such, but that's um, that's essentially going to be the um, the bottom of the ship. That will then give us even more stability. Uh, another thing that can happen is that these things can shake themselves apart. Uh, so they can shake themselves off the rocket, and uh, we don't want that as well. At this point, they're being held very, very securely uh, with the um, with the actual, uh, with this area through this side. And so to fix that up, you then go to your structures and trusses and just use a strut. And again, with the four selected, we just go back across, click on there, and then just go and select on the actual craft itself. And that will then just anchor it. And if you still got more problems, you just keep on adding more of these struts. And so uh, that you end up essentially just strutting the whole, the whole craft together. And then that does really aid the stability. Let's just save this one save the ship and there we are so i'm going to leave this episode here because we have now designed the ship that we want and in the next episode we'll take it into orbit um again i'll just go through that that process we did that in, in episode two as well uh and then we'll sort of do the um so we'll get it into orbit and then get it ready to go to the MUN and I'll sort of then go through what you're doing. There'll be a, a little bit more things we're going to be trying to be a little bit more exact with. I may even make something a bit wrong uh, when I do the next phase just to show you how to correct things. I think I'll do that actually. Yeah, I'll do that. Anyway, I'll explain that in the next episode. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you then.